We've got a 2017 limited truck here. This is a truck that came in to do a 48RE swap. Uh, this truck has 60,000 miles. It's a really nice truck, but he's wanting to add horsepower beyond of what we feel the 68R fee is capable of, which is generally in that when they want 800 horsepower and they want to hot rod it, uh, the 68R fee generally doesn't live uh, more than 20 to 40,000 miles at a time. And the 48RE uh, is capable of doing that. So we're going to take it down the road. I want you guys, I get a lot of questions about gear ratio, like what what is the difference in cruising down the highway RPMs. So this still has the 68 RFE in it. Um, we're going to video you guys, you know, just cruising down the road at 70 mile an hour. We can see what the RPMs are. Then we're going to pull in the shop to get the swap done in the next two days. And then we'll do another drive with the 48 RE. So you can pay attention to the shift points. You can pay attention to the RPMs versus mile per hour. The final drive on the 48 RE is very similar to the final drive of the 68 RFE. So cruising speeds really aren't affected that much. But this gives you just a real world uh, example comparing the 68 RFE drive to the 48 RE. Okay, this is a full throttle acceleration with the 68 RFE, and then we'll do one with the 48 RE for comparison. With the 68 RFE trucks, um, we generally recommend guys to stay with the 68 RFE for your normal daily driver tow trucks. Uh, my 16, I built the transmission. I towed with it over 40,000 miles. The trans was great. Never had any issues. Um, the, the double overdrive really helps split up the fourth to overdrive ratio because it's double overdrive. And this, the 48 RE has a really big gap from third gear direct drive to overdrive. So when you're towing a trailer in the mountains, you either want to be running 75 mile an hour or you want to slow down to 60 mile an hour to run third if you're running an exhaust gas temperature with a modified truck. Uh, so if you are just got a normal uh, 500 horsepower tuned truck, uh, we don't recommend doing a 48 RE swap. We really recommend this, the 48 RE for the actual high horsepower guys that are wanting to make 800 a thousand plus and they want to hot rod their truck on the weekend that's really where the ideal application is for a 48 re swap so this truck we're going to be using the porcupine controller which converts all the signals from the 48 re to the 68 rfe harness so that we still have a working park reverse neutral drive and then we also will use the anteater controller to do the uh, control the 48 re so he'll be able to put the anteater pro in here to all have top shift capabilities and he'll it'll show him a display show him what gear he's in you know first second third fourth and that's not through the oem harness that is an aftermarket um, standalone controller is what the anteater does is control the transmission and the porcupine converts the signals to make it work in a push button truck like this where push button start works uh, remote start for low cruise control, all those functions are still OEM. This is the Porcupine controller and as you can see this plugs into the uh, 68 RFE harness of the uh, truck. This plugs into the 48 RE of the uh, tr uh, new transmission and then it goes to power and ground and this gets wired directly to the battery. This never shuts off. Uh, this has a circuit board in it. Uh, with code programmed into it that when it sees the 48RE signals, it converts it to the 68RFE signals and this is what allows all the functions of the park reverse neutral drive display to still work. Okay, then this is getting the Anteater Pro. This is the Pro version that has the digital display and it has the tap shift function that taps uh, into your OEM tap shifter. Um, this is a standalone transmission controller that runs with a standard high pressure valve body and I have a lot of guys who 
don't understand the difference between a porcupine and an anteater. So say you want to run a full manual valve body in your 48 swap, you can buy a porcupine controller which converts the 48RE signals to the 68 RFE so your park reverse neutral drive works but then you can still put a full manual valve body in it and you do not need an anteater if you run a full manual valve body in a ratchet shifter. So the, the advantage of the anteater is that everything's OEM. You use your factory shifter, you've got factory tap shift, or you can leave it in drive and just let it shift on its own based on however you program the shift points in the computer. Uh, so most of the fancy trucks that have full interior that are daily drivers, then we will sell them a porcupine and an anteater so that has all automatic control and it works for racing and daily driving. So Landon is going to start this swap. Um, he's going to kind of walk you through each step of getting the adapter plate swapped out. Um, we have to grind down the crankshaft so it fits a 48 RE uh, flex plate and then we're going to get this is getting a comp 3 transmission uh, and a DPC quad disc converter so just stay tuned we'll get this whole swap done in the next two days and then we'll go on a drive with a 48 RE and see how it drives All right guys, so we got the 68 RFE out of the truck now. We, I want to pull the flex plate off. I just want to show you here the lip on the crank. So on the 2013 and newer trucks, they had a lip on the crank that the stock flex plate goes out around. But we need to grind flat with the surface of the crank to be able to fit the 48 RE flex plate for the pilot bearing for the new code, for the different, the pilot bearing on the converter sizes or not the bearing, but the pilot hole for the converters are different size, so we, for the 48 RE flex plates. So this is gonna need to be ground flat, and then in the meanwhile, we're obviously gonna have to change out the adapter plates. So we have brackets on either side that have four bolts, and then one bracket up top. Each, each bracket has four bolts on it, and then you'll have to pull the starter signal wire and the starter power wire off. I would recommend disabling or pulling the power cables off your battery before removing the adapter plate once you pull the uh, starter power wire off. So we got the crank cut down now. We have the lip ground off. So you'll see here that there's no, I'm not able to run my finger over any part of the crank when I'm coming from the flat edge to the over. And another thing that I wanted to specify that to clean up the edges. If you have any debris inside the pilot bearing of the crank, then you'll have a problem or issues when you're piloting the converter to get it to spin freely to put your converter bolts in. Also something to pay attention to is the cam seal on the back of the adapter plate. When you put it together, be very careful that it gives in very smooth, clean. The surface of the block around the cam is clean and you have good uh, I would recommend just a little bit of used oil or uh, some assembly glue to make so that it has a bit of a bit of a wiggle room as you're assembling it together so the seal doesn't roll or move or stick or um, cause it to leak. All right, so we have the 68 RFE lines here. This is a 13 plus, which has the the cooler bypass valve in it. We want to eliminate this on the cooler lines for the new transmission. So in order to do that we have, well I guess I'll explain here, is the fittings for the 68. This is where it goes into and we want to eliminate this. So I'm going up above this flex piece and cutting off, I had to actually take a cut off wheel and cut it as flat as possible down here or up here to be able to get the crush sleeve fitting on to the new line or onto the existing cooler line on the truck. So when we got that on now the, it won't have to flow through this. Next we got the flex plate on. So the flex plate, red Loctite on all of the bolts, torqued to the 125 and we're ready to roll. All right, another step in the process of the swap is the transfer case input shaft. We had to, we have to cut the shaft down 7 8 of an inch to allow for it to slide out, slide into the transmission, the 48, and not bottom out with the 68, this is a 68 that we're doing obviously as we had explained, and we have to, it, it splines into it further. So I have a jig rigged up that we 
set and slide in the end of the transfer case. We we're able to put a drill on it and spin the drill while we're cutting it. I marked it while I cut it, and I can get a nice, good, smooth line and a smooth cut. Uh, also, want to be a really careful and cautious once you get the cut done to clean up the splines. It, if you have any issues splining the transfer case into the new new transmission, could be because of some burrs around the teeth of the the shaft that was cut. So just a little tips here and there. Um, that's something that's very important. You're not able to go back together without doing this. And another part of the swap is the line fittings on the transmission. We will send a 45 degree adapter to thread into the front cooler fitting. That is to allow for to get up and out of the way of the shift cable. See the shift bracket will be the shift cable will be coming in here. We're just trying to get the line cooler lines to not hit it. So it'll be going straight up and over to the transmission. So the the rear cooler fitting does not get any a uh, an adapter straight off the case. We'll just have a 45 degree fitting that will go turn straight up off of the fitting off the trains. All right, removing the 68 uh, shift cable is fairly simple. So you have the top here, which that uh, just simply pops out of the ball on the off of the shift bracket. And this here, you have two tabs on either side. You just squeeze it and push it down through to unlock that and get it out. For the new 48 cable, which we have here, just the simple installation. This pin here, you just want to pull this one out and remove that. That's just a safety thing or a shipping thing. And then this clip here, white clip, it does not matter at any point in place. This here's being this is the uh, for the third gen style uh, 48 cable, you won't be using the sensor, so it does not matter which where you place that. And then this will go in the same place. Just simply push in, and the bottom here, you will just clip it in. So now for the shift cable to be able to read part correctly, this this clip here is very crucial in setting it up for the first time. You want to set it down in the lowest setting as possible. Um, so we have this down set at the lowest, and now we'll go down to the transmission side of it. The Shift linkage on the valve body is very important that when you fasten it, needs to be pushed. Well, so basically it has slop a little bit of play in it. You need to run it all the way closest to the shift cable bracket on the transmission before you tighten it. It's, for, it's fairly critical in being able to get it to read it, to have it to read part. Some of the times it's not able to read park right away, so then you'll have to take a little bit of a hammer and just tweak the bracket on the side of the transmission where your shift cable goes through right here. This bracket is going to need to be tweaked about a sixteenth to maybe an eighth of an inch before you'll be able to read park in some trucks. Some of them vary a little bit. Most of them you'll have to do that. Um, so if you're having issues finding park with a porcupine, this is... This, these are the steps that you're going to have to pay a little bit more. You're going to have to pay attention to to get it set correctly. Okay, so this cable you'll have to loosen up this nut and make sure that it is gent all the way towards the bracket before you tighten it. And then this bracket, you may have to bend it a little bit this way towards this, bring it together. All right, it's important that the wiring for the and eater and the factory wiring is tied up and out of the way from the drive shaft. We don't want to get that tangled up, grabbing a drive shaft and ripping a harness out. Also, keeping the transmission lines away from the exhaust or away from a point that will be allow wearing and <clears throat> possibly a hole over a, a hole in a transmission line over an extended period of time. Alright, now that Landon is finished with the sw transmission swap, he wanted to put it on the dyno, flash it tuned in it, see what kind of power it would make. Uh, we made 504 horsepower on the max effort tune and 410 on his number one tune. So we will get it off the dyno and I think LeVon's probably going to go take it, take it around the block with him and we'll send him on his way.
10 pounds of boost. 